to wear a mini skirt? Yeah. As a matter of okay. mini skirt. Mini, mini skirt. <laughs> like when we went to California, um, she usually wears mini skirts. Mini skirt. And it's always pleasurable to uh, be around her. <laughs> I went to California. I was looking forward to seeing what she was wearing. Uh huh. She was wearing one of, you ever see those those new dresses these women are wearing with the, the business women are wearing? They come down to their ankles. It looks like a yeah, nun's outfit. Yeah, the long outfit. skirts are coming back. And I, I said, oh, my God, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, going to complain. I complained to my agent about what she was wearing. Oh, God. And then um, the next day she was back to miniskirt. Miniskirt. <laughs> hey, the funeral is great now. Because her best attribute is her legs. The funeral is great in L.A. <laughs> Thank you. I got, I got, we got out there about 5.30, and we thought we'd be front row, but, Jesus, there's so many people out there. Yeah, what time did you get there? We got there about 5.30. Yeah, there were a lot of people, and you know what? Just stay tuned because we're going to play you all the Los Angeles news reports. My favorite one, Robin, if you remember yesterday. <laughs> We watched 23 of them. We yeah, were all busy. I can hardly remember one from the other. I know. We were getting, like, at first it was fun, <laughs> and then it got real boring. <laughs> but we watched all 23 of them that we had anyway, and I understand there are more. Yeah, I don't think we got them all. But uh, we're watching one, and this one woman comes on, reporter, and I told you, all the report, all the anchor people act like they hate me, all right? So they're all like, uh, like, they all even act like they don't even know who I am. She goes, well, Howard Stern came to town, and, um, you know, he has a lot of listeners. 25,000 people showed up at this funeral for Mark and Brian. But I must tell you that crowd looks like. <laughs> and then she admits that her husband listens. Right. Then she says, you know, I told my husband to listen to this show because it was so disgusting, and I wanted him to know what it was. Now I have to admit he listens every day. And then she goes, I don't know what kind of dopes listen to this yeah. show. She goes, what kind of dopes listen to this show? Her one? husband. Her stupid husband. What was it? If you're interested, those are the first two reports are that are on Machine 2. All right, you want to hear these, dude? Yeah. All right, here, I'll play the first two. You, you can't because they're on the other... Oh, I can't play it with him on? Right. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, all right, one other thing. Um, yeah. At the end of the funeral, you said you were uh, going to come back in a year. Are you, gonna, you planning to come back out in L.A. and do something out here? Yeah, I might come back to L.A., sure. We go, we go out to L.A. for Grammys, Oscars, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm sure that there'll be another sort of, um, what do they call that, benchmark? Opportunity. Opportunity. <laughs> Opportunity. <laughs> no, that's not what they call Milestone. it. Milestone. Milestone. Okay, let's go with Milestone. Milestone? Nah. I don't know. Come on, let Baba Booey win one. Okay. Um, milestone. <laughs> there'll be another milestone that we're going to want to return to uh, Hollywood, all right? All A right, hallmark, great. if you will. Great. <laughs> All right, let me uh, play these tapes so I got to hang up on you. All right, thanks. Because uh, there's no such thing as playing a tape and keeping a listener on the air here. No, we don't have the <laughs> capacity for that. Yeah. No, that'll never happen. With I think all we... those knobs over there, you think you could do anything. They no, said that's... if we had 75,000 people at the rally, then maybe we would have gotten that. But uh, we only had 25,000. Tell a cancer boy to work on that. Yeah, I think Yeah, I think when we're number one on Pluto, we're going to uh, get that uh, capability. Thank you. All righty. All right. <laughs> You know, most morning shows have no ratings, but every capability yes. known to man. They're sitting there looking at a computer right now. Right, doing right. Doing anything they want. All right. You ready? Here we go. Stern just made radio history by reaching the top of the ratings in New York and L.A. at the same time. His critics say he's gross and disgusting, but the self-proclaimed king of all media is now holding court in Hollywood, and our Marlene Woods is there with a live report. How are you holding up, Marlene? We're, we're hanging in there. Uh, and this is the one, we're hanging in there. Yeah. Like, like something horrible She's was happening to her. looking at the people her. going, ugh. Yeah, I mean, this was unbelievable. So this Yenta, she, she hooks up with another Yenta, the Yenta out in the field. All right. What is this from KCBS? Yeah. KCBS. <laughs> the second report is, this is just the initial report. The second report yeah. is where they really get into it. But this one's good, too. Yeah. So the women are talking to each other. And the one now that she threw it to. She's like, out there yeah, in she, the crowd. She's nauseous from being near our fans. <laughs> and meanwhile, the fans are totally ignoring her. They're actually very well behaved. Yeah. And they're, they're all standing around. It's 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning. There's already about 1,000 people in the parking lot. That she can't comment on, that, that, you know, I got to applaud two reporters. I really do, two newspaper reporters. Out of, I've read maybe 100 articles on the L.A. Uh, funeral. Most of them completely ignored what went on in the funeral. And do what? What did they talk about? They talk about, about the FCC or something oh. like that. They just, they go, uh, there was a funeral for 25,000 people, but Stern is under indictment, <laughs> a grand jury, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the hell they do, you know. <laughs> the whole thing. So, uh... Who are the two reporters? All right, first of all, Fred Schuster... Oh, fabulous yeah. uh, newspaper article, which I'll read to you later. It, it really actually captures the flavor of the event and even points out some of the things that we couldn't see, Robin. Oh, I'd like to hear that. You know, he was really there among the people. And, and reported and, on the event. Yes. He was the only person out of any article I've read about you in the last year 
that called you a comedian instead of shock jock, shockmeister, bad boy. Yeah, you I mean, know, all you those know, words. I make people laugh for a living. Obviously, I make a, millions of people laugh more than any stand-up comedian you can think of. I mean, I do four hours of new material every day, four or five hours. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, all I hear is that I'm repulsive. I'm not, I'm not anything to these uh, people. It but, was pretty fun. You know, I'm just thinking that uh, uh, 20 years from now, maybe you'll be doing uh, commercials. Where you yeah. say, remember me? Yeah. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the repulsive moron that you used to hate. Now I'm just a doddering old man. <laughs> really? And now I'm safe. <laughs> now, you can, now I can do commercials. Oh, now these names are cute. Yeah. <laughs> I read an article the other day. I wanted to read it on the air. I never got to it uh, about how uh, the government is turning me into Lenny Bruce. And I don't want to be Lenny Bruce, though. I don't want to be, you know? I don't want to be I that. know you've been fighting that, but yeah, they keep I really, going. I don't want to end up like uh, Odin on a toilet. I'm already on pain medication. <laughs> See, here you go. It's starting. <laughs> I'm almost on heroin. I mean, that's you know, the next it's step. it's exactly what got uh, Chevy Chase, that back pain. It's right. <laughs> Made him unfunny. So, um, he should have been on what I was on. He wouldn't have had back pain. So, you know... The other reporter I want to applaud is uh, Claudia Puig. Puig. Claudia Puig. <laughs> I read her article, and I got to admit, it was just like a fun article. It, it pointed out, again, a lot of the uh, events that took place. It wasn't really casting aspersions on the show. I mean... That's what reporters are supposed to do. They're supposed to report on events. They're supposed to observe for people who can't be there. Yeah, well, this reporter in the field that we're playing now ought to take note of that. <laughs> I think gross and disgusting is uh, probably pretty popular out here this morning. Melvin. See what I mean? Um, what was that guy yelling? Some guy just got behind her and said, going, Melvin, Melvin. Yeah, one of our fans got carried away. And then she says, see what I mean? See what I mean? <laughs> Melvin. I'm responsible for every mental patient. There are probably about a thousand people out here this morning who, Terry, they've been lining up out here since about four o'clock this morning. They are all waiting. And they're all disgusted. You have to yeah. see the looks on their faces. They've all been lining up here since four o'clock this morning. And, ugh. and meanwhile, they're covering the event. They're switching to it every 10 minutes. Why are they covering if it if it's so disgusting? Yeah, if I'm so disgusting, why would you bother with me? For radio star Howard Stern, who is due to make an appearance in about an hour. As I said, they've been gathering since 4.30 this morning to witness Stern's first live broadcast from Los Angeles. Uh, and that's because he is number one now. There is somebody I want you to meet, and then we're going to see if we can make our, our way through this crowd here in just a second. This guy, I think, is probably one of the biggest fans out here this morning. This is Scott. And, Scott, I want you to tell our audience this morning how far you drove to see Howard Stern. I drove from a little north of Sacramento. It was a little over 400 miles. We drove for like seven and a half hours. Why would you drive for that long to get here? What do you like so much about Howard Stern? Just because he's a... A lot of Baba Booey's being yeah, yelled at in the yeah. background. The background was more fun than what the guy was saying. So the guy drove from Sacramento seven and a half hours. Well, you can't even hear the show. No. <laughs> Sounds like he might be taking pills for his back, too. <laughs> As you know, and he tells it like it is, like everyone, just the way it should be told is the way Howard tells it. So the gross and disgusting stuff that his critics claim that he's, that he's doing on the radio, he's taking these liberties on the radio, you think he's just... <laughs> liberties. He's taking liberties. He was just talking about the United States of America. We're taking liberties. Talking about life is taking a liberty. <laughs> taking liberties. God only knows what I'm taking liberties with. But I'm also noticing she hasn't said one word. You know, she's repeated mm -hmm. the same thing mm -hmm. about 50 times. Yeah. Oh, well, she's got nothing to say, and he's got nothing to say. Telling it like it is. This guy's tired from a long drive. <laughs> well, see, everyone actually thinks those things. They just don't actually come out and say it. So he's just being open. He's being honest. All right, Scott, good luck with the crowd out here this morning. Uh, Terry, it's just quite the scene out here this morning. We are omitting some of the festivities out here, like the butt bongo. We thought it was a little too early for our audience to share that with you. What was great was the giant phallus. Did you see that? Oh, that was the best. When that came on the screen, I hooted. Yeah, it was some of the reports, about nine of them, had the giant phallus. Yeah, they'd go, you know, they'd start way back, and then they'd yeah. zoom in, and then you'd realize that thing is a, a big uh, phallus. Or how about they, they flash the audience, and 
there's this guy in this weird, we thought it was a Swamp Thing costume, yeah. you know? So we're, we're watching it and everything, and uh, the guy, they interviewed the guy, and he was a giant feces. Yeah, he said, Howard's number one, and I'm a big number two. Yeah. <laughs> On television. <laughs> and uh, I said to Robin, hey, I thought that guy was the Swamp yeah, Thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I didn't realize he was a giant, you know, <laughs> giant duty. I knew his uh, costume was brown, but. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know he got down. Good morning. We need Marlene. I can't help but notice that most of the people behind you are men. Maybe you could find out what they think about uh, charges that Stern is derogatory to, to women when we check in with you later again in the hour. Yeah. All right. Okay. Don't, if anybody asks you to play butt bongo, just say no, okay? Uh, yes, don't worry. <laughs> okay, good. We'll see you later, Marlene. You are brave. So, mm. Oh, she's brave. She's so brave. We're so standing now, on a street. Now, going to Vietnam is brave. <laughs> now, in the name of fair reporting, she goes back and gets a woman. Oh, I see. <laughs> how are you doing out there, Marlene? Well, we're underneath this crowd somewhere. Can you believe how, how big a crowd this is? I must be totally out of it, but I'm shocked to find... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think you I'm are. I'm out of it, obviously. <laughs> we notice you can't put two sentences together. You might be out of it. <laughs> She's admitting finally the truth. She might have back pain. Truth comes out. I'm yeah. out of it. I'm out of it. I don't get it. I'm out of it. There's a lot of people out here, <laughs> so I'm out of it. So why are you there? So many people out here waiting for Howard Stern this morning. As we were telling you earlier, he's going to be out here at about 7 o'clock to have a live broadcast. It's, like it's like the president, isn't it? Yeah. It's, I didn't realize the president was motorcade will be moving yeah. down this street. Uh, we have been informed that he'll be coming out around seven o'clock. There are rumors that it might be as late as eight o'clock. But I right understand his remarks will include. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty cool watching these reports. <laughs> Makes a guy feel pretty good about himself. Cast and he's holding a mock funeral for the DJs that he dethroned over at KLOS, Mark and Brian. Since brainless. They are no longer number one in Los Angeles. And Mark and Brainless, Rob. <laughs> yes. Howard Stern is. Lovely people we're having out here this morning. Anyway, Why is she saying She that? constantly comments on the fact that she thinks these people are, are the scum of the earth. <laughs> yeah, the same people show up for an Eric Clapton concert. And the same people watching her news. Yeah. Hey, Stern has uh, certainly made an impact on radio. His critics charge that he's obnoxious, that he's a sexist, that he's racist. But obviously out here, all fans. Earlier you pointed out, Terry, that most of the people out here were men. Well, I, you're right. I found... Uh, oh, well... I don't know what's going on, if Howard Stern is out there or not yet. I wanted to introduce you to Pam, and uh, she's out here this morning. Let's see if we can get her attention for you. Hi, Pam. Hi. Pam, one of the, one of the things that critics charge Howard Stern with is that he's a sexist pig. What is, what is your opinion about that? Well, I don't think so. Are you oh, let's disregard that. Yeah. Yeah, any woman who says, I don't think so. What is this sexist pig thing? Everybody's a sexist pig. Anybody with a penis is a sexist pig these days. <laughs> I think so. I, I would just refuse to listen to him at first, but I've been listening, and it's not that bad. It's pretty good. So he's sort of grown on you? Yeah. Like, like yeah. mold or, like I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so he's yeah. addictive to you? Yeah. What are, what are some of the things that... that, 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 that <laughs> what? What was the guy this? Goes, she goes, uh, he's addictive to you? And some guy goes, yeah, like crack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What are some of the things that, that you think are, are so interesting about his show? I think it's pretty funny. It's a lot funnier than a lot of the other mornings. So you don't take it seriously? Oh, no. No, you can't. If <laughs> you start taking it seriously, then you take it personal. No. All right. All right, Pam, thanks for joining right. us this Bye -bye. morning. Terry, we're out here live at the Palace in Hollywood. You know, I think this is your kind of crowd. I think you should finish the broadcast and come out here and join us. I have to confess, Marlene, I told my husband that he should check out this show. It was gross and disgusting. I couldn't believe it was on the air. Now he listens every Every day. Well, what can you say? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody must like him, but no sign of Howard yet, right? No. She goes, my husband listens. Somebody must Somebody like him. Must it's her husband. Jeez. <laughs> Doesn't she hear her own sentences? That's a weird... Yeah, I know, I know. These anchor people get so befuddled. You know what's funny is that uh, she goes, hey, you better check out this show. But she couldn't check it out. The husband had to check it out. I got a feeling she checks it out, too. How come people, like, check it out? They don't say they listen, but they check it out. You got to hear this. Yeah. See, we, you know, it's our like ratings. Touch this sore. I know our, our ratings. Are, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know our ratings are not accurate. No. Because that woman listens. Absolutely. She knew about Bud Bongo. She knew everything. She knew the whole deal. 
Well, we learned something in that report. We found out that people shouldn't take a comedy show seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. I love her comment about her husband. That's great. Somebody must be listening. Yeah. The you just said you <laughs> Same sentence. It was in the same sentence. Yeah, I know. Same thought. Like the thoughts weren't connected. Right. The brain cells don't meet, apparently. <laughs> but they're all hostile. All the anchor people, every one of these reports, they're all hostile. Oh, yeah. Somebody must be listening. Well, yeah, obviously. I'm not like these people. Your husband is those people. Yeah, I mean, you're married to a guy who yeah. thinks that's funny. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, your husband could just as well be out in the audience there, the, guy, the same guys you're goofing on. And the other woman goes, yeah. oh, what, well, what are you going to do? Nah. Your husband listens, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> See, everybody sucks. That's all. I've, I've come to that conclusion. <laughs> I think that's a pretty funny comment. What are yeah. you going to do? Your husband listens. This is the one with the traffic report where they had overhead shots. Yeah. Los Angeles uh, television is kind of funny. The news reports, it was like, and now here he is. Uh, here's Bree Walker. You know, they, they have, like, pictures of each anchor person in the beginning of the news. Yeah, every newscast had this roll of, of film with pictures of every person as they announced them. Yeah, and then they have, and in Sky 9, Sky 9 is the helicopter that they're so proud of. Like Robin said to me yesterday, she'd just say, we have a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is from the uh, traffic report. As far as the inbound traffic goes, let's find out what's happening out there. Jennifer York in Sky Camp 5. Good morning, Jennifer. Sky Camp 5. <laughs> What is it, Sky Cap? Sky Cam, I guess. Oh, Sky Cam. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have Jennifer in Sky Cam. Uh... Sky Cam 5. We have a helicopter. <laughs> nya, 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 nya. <laughs> and good morning. When we left Van Nuys, it was about 44 degrees. Very chilly this morning. We'll quickly show you what we're flying over. We are in Hollywood at this time. And as Barbara mentioned, we're flying over Howard Stern, holding a live remote, a mock funeral in honor of dethroning his morning competition and rating number one in his morning show. Now, we are at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. And Vine Street is actually closed between Hollywood Boulevard and Yucca. If you need to get into the Hollywood area this morning, your best north and southbound alternates would be Gow. Argyle Highland or Kawanga. You we thought that was pretty cool that there was actual, like, we were causing traffic yeah. problems. We like that. You couldn't get into Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Folks out this morning. Again, this is the, the corner of Hollywood and Vine and Hollywood. Hollywood, Vine, and Hollywood. In Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I can't hear anything. <laughs> these are just some. Uh, I love Howard because. These are the fans being interviewed out on the street. Okay. He's different from the rest. He's the best. He'll always be a winner. He's a god in radio. I respect him. Uh, what can you say? He's human. He's unguarded. He's unbridled. Go for it, Howard. He's number one, and I'm a big number two. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the guy. The that's the guy who we thought two. was dressed up as Swamp Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Turned out we were wrong. <laughs> oh, this is the guy from Hard Copy. These, these guys are nuts. Yeah, they're, uh, but they get a lot of good footage out of us. Yeah. They slant it so horribly, though. And their, their whole slant is that I'm a bully. Yeah. Well, you beat up on their little producer. Yeah. Did you notice how they edited the piece, though? Yeah. They left out all the good stuff that I said to her. <laughs> they really wanted to show you beating up on Tonight on Hard Copy. Howard Stern invades L.A. and picks on our little Audrey all over again. Have you ever dated anyone in your organization in Hard Copy? How are you, big bully? <laughs> that idiot. That guy's such a dope. The guy who anchors. And he's an anchor man. He's not even an anchor man. I don't even think he sees the reports. They just have him cut the wraparounds. Oh, yeah. And that whole scene going on behind him in the newsroom, that's on a blue screen. He's not even in a newsroom. He's sitting uh, in front of a, a screen. Yeah. What is it, Gary? Well, putting up what actually happened with Audrey Levin as opposed to what you're about to play. Yeah, okay. Stern, that... Radio Bully came to Los Angeles today to celebrate his ratings victory, but he spoiled the celebration by picking on a young woman. Doug Bruckner has the story. All of your favorite people are here today. Hard copy, Fox. Yeah, yeah, all hard copy and Fox and all the goofy little reports that you do and all the right. negative like reports. You, you, you can't do a report about that. I might have some talent that I've got millions and millions of fans. That Howard, you can't do. I'd like to ask another question. Um, are you a, you're number one How did you get your job? You How did you get your job? Necessary Have you ever dated anyone in your organization in hard copy? Oh, yeah. I'm asking you a question. Have you ever dated anyone in your organization? What a bully, that Howard Stern. He said bully like 900 yeah, times. Bully, bully, bully. What a bully. Radio's cowardly lion in all his hideous glory. <laughs> hideous glory. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> what a dick.
fighting over a mock funeral for two rival DJs he beat in the ratings. But this wasn't enough for the six foot five shock jock. Once again, big bull. Notice they play evil music every time I'm on? Yeah, but this thing is this read. <laughs> shock jock. Six foot five shock jock. <laughs> <laughs> They're like at war with me, and I'm not even sure why. What did I do to them? Yeah. You know, the shows are so competitive now that. Um, I think having me on, they'll bring some good ratings. Yes. Some of the people from A Current Affair called us yesterday to say that they were fans and they wanted you to know that all the people at A Current Affair that used to do the bad stuff about you, yeah. they all moved over to hard copy. Oh, is that what happened? Because That's Current Affair said, yeah. did a really nice piece on us. Yeah, yeah so they want, it's decent. They want yeah. to know that Current Affair is now a fan and the bad people are now at hard copy. Oh, I see. Because <laughs> that music, it's like Bram Stoker's Howard Stern, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like Darth Vader walking in. Hey, Howard turned his bile and his mob on our petite producer, Audrey Lavin. Audrey hard Lavin, copy. hard copy. Hard copy. You're Hi. cute. Um, one of the Didn't things Jack I wanted Nicholson, to ask you... Did Jack you. Nicholson ask you to go to dinner with him? <laughs> one of the things I wanted to ask you, Howard... Did you ever go to dinner? You, did you have, I'm asking you a question. Howard, no. I'm here to ask you a question. Well, why can't I ask what you I one? To... Later... Notice that's where they edited. Yeah. I said to her, isn't it true you dressed up as Catwoman, videotaped yourself, and sent it to Jack Nicholson? <laughs> and she would and she, and notice they didn't put that in the report. Right, that's out of there. Yeah, I wonder why. Storm went too far. What a bully. <laughs> you know what? I am sick and tired of you. I'm sick and tired but of your you crap journalism. You, you know what? Why don't you leave? Why don't you, why don't you go? Know. Seriously, you it's know what? Hard I'm tired of you. I'm really to tired of you. She told me she was going to do a positive piece. She told me. And oh, this is where Melrose Larry Green starts <laughs> arguing with her. Do you have that on tape? Yeah, too? it's all on that other tape. Oh, good. All right. We're going to do a positive piece about Howard and me running for mayor. Liar, Audrey. You get me right. You get in front of the king of media and you bow down right now to the king of media. You are a liar. Yeah, we know other people have asked the question. I'm not embarrassing you. That the Hollywood establishment. Your job embarrasses you. you. Who cares? Who cares, honey? I her big thing. She kept trying to ask a question like, "Are you are you upset that the Hollywood establishment won't accept well, you?" Well, do you? Feel, her question was, "Do you feel uncomfortable well, in Hollywood?" I got to tell you among something. Among all these stars, the more I think about how absurd that question is, if anything, I have been totally accepted by the Hollywood establishment to the point where I was courted by nine movie studios to sign a picture deal. I signed with a movie studio. Uh. I now work for, uh, uh, what do you call it, Time Warner, the E! Network. How much more Hollywood establishment can you be accepted by? <laughs> well, she started with, earlier in the day, her question was, why can't you get any big people to come on your show? And then we listed, like, all these really incredible people who did she's the show. Like a, she's like a nutcase, that woman. And then she just kept asking why we can't get anybody good. And you said, well, I just told you who we had good. And she doesn't care. Well, they weren't on the A-list. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, they, yeah, she goes, well, you consider them A-list? I go, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, his name starts with an A, and he's pretty popular. <laughs> Could care less. They can all kiss you me. You about A-list and establishments. We don't care. Not gonna accept you? Honey, I don't care who accepts me. I haven't built a career on being accepted you by anybody. You comfortable in Los Angeles among all these celebrities? I don't see any celebrities here. Some journalist you are, honey. Gary, I'm done with her. That's the edit. Yeah, that's where they edited out the stuff. Another edit. That was a very obvious one. I'll play you the real conversation after I play this. Comfortable with celebrities. Get lost, sweetheart. I don't entertain you anymore. You're not a journalist. One definition of a bully is somebody who can dish it out but can't take it. Something like I took it. Uh, hey, hey uh, I invited her to a press conference. She came. Well, actually, she she actually just showed up. <laughs> that was great. Oh. <laughs> you know, nothing like a good trip to Hollywood <laughs> for a little hijinks and fun. What was this TV report? Was that anything? Or can I be done with these? Was there anything interesting on that one? Oh, uh, that was a good one too. Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, that was one of the locals. Oh, you know what that was? That was a woman. That uh, came up here. We you asked her to go topless for the interview. Oh yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Want to hear that one, Robin? <laughs> so she was funny. Yeah. <laughs> now you got to change tapes. No, I'm cool. I got it. I'm a professional, Robin. No. <laughs>
<laughs> well, now, what uh, some people consider a different kind of air pollution. Morning radio's potty mouth personality. <laughs> potty mouth. Thank you. Oh, geez. Is this the station that ran our TV show? Yes. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah. this is uh, this is the, the line I was thinking of when I said a hundred years from now you'd be doing denture commercials or something. You say, remember me? I'm old potty mouth. Yeah, potty mouth. <laughs> and you know all that pot in my mouth made my teeth rot. <laughs> Th their report was particularly interesting because uh, they managed to. Uh, Rummage through our old TV shows and pull the best clips. Yeah, of you, you know, of women writhing around the floor and bathing. What word is that? Clips, clips, clips. You hear him say clips? <laughs> yeah. The best clips. You have such trouble with that word. Sound bites. <laughs> from now on, clips will be known as sound bites. Stern is here in Los Angeles, and uh, News 13's Vicky Liviaca shows us his state. Vicky Mikiaka. Liviaca. Yeah. Vicky she was Liviaca. really good looking too. I didn't realize. Boy, out in L.A., they got a couple of sweethearts broadcasting <laughs> that news. Vicky Suvalaki. <laughs> she looked pretty good, huh? She was okay. This is the redhead now, not the blonde. They were all good looking. This is the one I said she could interview me if she took her top off? Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you never saw her when you said that. Actually, no. actually, it was her and her producer who was also cute. His routine is proving to be no less shocking than his antics on the air. The following is an encore presentation of the Howard Stern Show. He's rude and crude, the shock jock. From Same stupid story every time. He's rude and crude, the shock jock. Potty mouth. Potty mouth. <laughs> Meanwhile, all Los Angeles is listening to us, and this is they're explaining who we are. Everybody knows who we are. I tell you, the only two good reports were in the newspaper. Fred Schuster and uh, Claudia Pug. they actually reported what went on. i got to read these to you. Yeah, I'd like to hear what went on. Otherwise, it sounds like a terrible event. See, because if you notice, none of them cover the event. No. None of them show you what happened. It's the same stupid story over and over again. They're like puppets, these newscasters. A major event happened in this city. For some reason, 25,000 people gathered. And if you listen to these news reports, you can't tell why. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They, they got to go back to journalism school. New York. Howard Stern is no holds barred. His canceled TV show came with a warning on the box. Here we go. Here's more. Canceled TV show, warning on the box. We still don't know what happened. Why was I there? Yeah, but I don't understand what box the warning was You're on. Right. Yeah, it, the, a warning on the box. My TV show wasn't in a box. That's my <laughs> videotape. Ay, ay, ay. You've already been identified as potty mouth. Yeah. <laughs> this might be the radio launch. Yeah, I got three job offers off of this. I hate to hear what a negative report sounds like. She's an annoying woman. Well, then I told Even him, though that's redundant. But, but, so. Millions of fans tune in to him every morning. But the FCC, the agency which governs the public airwaves, wants to muzzle him. So far, we still haven't heard why we were in Los Angeles. Yeah. Now, we're, now we're a minute into it. Howard Stern, it seems, is obscene. Alone. Howard Stern, it seems, is obscene. This is a fellow broadcaster calling me obscene. I haven't. I haven't been. Uh, I haven't been convicted. What is this? That's slanderous. Why you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she was good looking. We can excuse all that. Oh, you can. Ken. Sure, you can excuse the lack of brains once they're good looking. Oh, you. It makes it all worth it. You could almost, it almost, you almost can tolerate being around them. Home of the Howard Stern Show to find out what makes him tick. He agreed to an interview only if my producer and I took our tops off. <laughs> I asked her to Did take her top off and interview me. Definitely. So she said what she happened? wouldn't do it. She said we that, took uh, a pass, and uh, instead Howard Stern came to L.A. And then one report tiled out when Gary kissed my ass. Right. A lot of the reports did that. They tiled out my ass, but they didn't really tile it. You can right. see everything. You, you see the crack and everything. everything. <laughs> I was really embarrassed. <laughs> hey, Gary, your teeth were cold on my ass. <laughs> well, that porcelain really is ice it's, cold. You're it's lucky like a, he didn't stick. You yeah. Know, it, it is porcelain. It's like a Imagine if his teeth stuck to my butt. <laughs> it's like a toilet in the morning. Yeah. It felt like a cold toilet in exactly. your mouth. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after these words.